All right, so it is May 21st. In a certain way, I feel like I'm coming out of a kind of a, a pretty dark hole of, um, call it like a depressive, doubtful um, feelings of despair and just the best way is just, just deadness where you just where I'm just tired and no amount of rest can make me feel any better in fact the more I rest the the more shame I feel so it's just a it's a dark thing I call it my man I'm gonna start calling it my man period I've said that a few times before but I'm like I'm gonna start calling it that um, well I don't want to give it a name and give it this monthly expectancy because I'm convinced, I'm becoming more and more convinced that at least half of it is created by my own, just the patterns of my own neural track waves, the way I think about it. And so where I want to place my attention is this, is on this. Right now it's 6 a.m. and I'm processing a few things. The idea, the thought, I should say, that really pulled me out of this, the, the, the event that was the catalyst of pulling me out of that feeling and, and instilling in me a sense of energy and direction and hope and um, not excitement, but energized and a looking forward to something. The event that did that was a decision. And what's really fascinating about that is that it wasn't a decision that came from a feeling that I could do it or that it's gonna go great, a feeling of reassurance, of, oh, of hope. Of, of, it didn't come from a feeling. It was a decision that was made in spite of the counter feelings, the resistance, fear, doubt, worthlessness, um, call it imposter syndrome, and just like self-sabotaging patterns. It was actually a decision that happened in the face of that, and that's what I want to talk about. That decision to send that email, this said, the email said, I'm a yes to this in my gut. My mind doesn't know how it's going to happen, and in many ways I'm not believing in myself, but nevertheless, I'm a yes to this. Let's go ahead and book it. And booking the venue for sending the email to Jude over at the clubhouse in Salt Lake City to book the venue for the event on um, June 29th. And in addition to that, taking it one step further and saying, in fact, what if we did like a, what if we did a, a what if we committed to four up front? We're committing to four events. And um, then this thought of, well, maybe I could get a discount by, you know, an additional discount by booking all four all up front, you know, and that's a win-win. So sending that proposal off to her and like really looking it over and asking myself, checking in, am I doing this out of a manic state? Am I doing this out of a false sense of confidence or any type of grandiose mental illness type shit? No. I'm actually doing this in the face of personal doubt and in many ways looking at my own life and saying, dude, you are not the key player. You got more dissonance in your life than anyone who ought to be out here promoting this idea of harmony across the board. But this is what's beautiful about this event. I'm not the guru coach who, who offers support to people from a place of having made it, having figured it out, and having already uh, succeeded. I've had certain successes, but I've had way more failures, I think, in my life than successes. But this is me taking a stand that the world needs this event. My world, for me to live in it, needs this tribe of people. It needs this it needs support from our key players. It needs to identify our key players. And it needs them just as much as they need the support from it, from the movement, from the community, from the, the camaraderie and the connection that we 
enjoy at the event. I'm not here from up here looking down on everyone and saying, hey, I'm giving you the support because I'm in such a strong position. It's actually like, hey, look, we all need support. We're all stronger together if we all give and receive support from each other. And from that principle, differentiating itself from coaching companies and coaching um, brands and um, things like that. At least in my mind. And uh, sending off the email, writing notes in the journal, time going by really quickly, and all of a sudden looking up and it's like, it's already like getting bright outside. I was going to go to bed tonight, but maybe I'll just, right now it doesn't feel like the right time to go to sleep. Right now it feels like the right time to go on a walk and kind of process this and and take some action steps and I'll take a nap later when I'm tired, you know. I'll take a nap as soon as I'm tired. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to the event on June 29th in Salt Lake City and the tickets will be up for sale by no matter how ugly or pretty the page looks those tickets will be for sale by May at least one month before so that'll be May 29th so that's in a week you know about a week eight days let's say let's actually say the 28th so by next Sunday by next Sunday, there will be the, the page up, the order page up, which is like the promotion page, which is like where someone will go to buy it. Now, to get that level of clarity, we've got to have clarity on the tickets, the prices, what's included in each one. i got to have that written clearly, and, and, then, and then, you know, it's not required, but, well, it's got to all be on a web page, and then it's not required, but if there was some design and some artwork and some just making it easy to to read and understand and really get the feel of what it is so having it branded that's not required but it would sure be nice so if i get on this pretty quick and get moving i don't see why i couldn't have that done and so then i just kind of wanted to check myself and say all right am i making rash decisions out of a place of not really thinking it through or am I am I going slow and methodical and and really saying something that I'm going to follow through on because I've said this before and then the resistance afterwards became too much and I didn't follow through on it I kept postponing it so is this is this going to be the time for real or not like and let me while I'm feeling good right now let me because it, with that decision started to come a a domino effect of other thoughts and ideas and feelings that started to feel like this expansive sense of pulling me out of a deep dark place emotionally and so while I'm feeling good let me just write down a few of the things that I can remind myself of not if but when the doubt and the resistance starts to creep in and wrote a few of those things down one is this, if you're feeling shitty, if I'm, if I'm feeling shitty, that's the best word to really just describe and sum it all up, then here's what I do. First, just simply shift my focus to one thing, anything that I did do already that I know to do. Focus on it. Write that thing down. What was one thing that I did do? Well. What's good is that I did abstain from sugar and carbs for the last 24 hours. That's one thing I did do. For example, I did do 10,000 steps yesterday. At least I did do that, right? Any little thing. The bigger, the better. But if, if you can't choose something too big, then just choose something small. But just any little thing. Then the next thing, write down, this is number two, step two. Write down one thing that I know to do. I'm not saying yet to do it or not. But one small, simple thing, a relatively easy thing, sometimes you need that, that I do know to do. Go on, take a walk that's 
a short walk of, of gratitude for 2,000 steps, for example. Go do a two-minute cold plunge. Choose something that's easy enough to where I could do it. Step three, go do that thing. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just going on a walk. Step four, celebrate that you did the thing that you know to do. And what that looks like is, yeah, I did it. Good job. Good job. Next thing, write it down. Somewhere, just measure it. Where do I keep track of it? Is it in my daily uh, to-dos? Is it in a text to a friend? Hey, bro, I just went on this cold plunge. It was great. Any little, making a record of it, record it. Next step, ask myself the question, like, like tune into my energy, take a refresh on my energy, just a deep breath in, tune in and ask myself the question, what's next? I may feel like doing something a little bit bigger and building on that momentum, or I may feel like going back and laying in the bed, feeling crappy, wanting to hide from the world. Just write down what is that next thing. Make a clear, conscious decision, whatever that next thing is that I'm going to do. And then go do that thing. And even if that thing is horrible. In other words, I'm knowing in advance the thing could be horrible and I could still choose it. Not necessarily predicting that it will be, but I'm knowing no matter what it is, I'm just going to write it down and I'm going to do it, whatever it might be. Just making an intentional, conscious choice of something. And those are the steps. So I wrote those down. Now I've written them down and set them in the recording. Now I may, the next thing that comes to me to do is go post this video to the YouTube channel. That's an extra little step. And then the next one would be go share it on, the, on your personal page. Maybe another two people will see it that wouldn't have seen it before, right? So. That's what I'm doing. This is just my newest insight, a little distinction, um, a little process around some distinctions, not one distinction, but a little process around living the key player's way. The key player's way is not for everyone. The key player's way is for someone who's a purpose-driven leader, entrepreneur, who is expanding the amount of harmony they experience across the board. And it's a mountain without a top. We have not accomplished anything. Okay? We're not, we've accomplished a lot, but we're not, it's not based on what we've accomplished at all. It's only based on right now where we're at, looking in the past and celebrating how far we've come, making a mental note of that and sharing that. And in that valuable support, and there's a little energetic, emotional hit that we get off of that even if it's just a brief moment of celebration and gratitude, looking out into the future just a little bit, clarifying an action step and taking that step and making one little step up that mountain without a top and then re repeating that, looking back over that little step we did make, celebrating that, sharing that, allowing other people to receive value off of that and looking forward and making that next step, celebrating that, sharing that. By doing that, we're all together the key players in the game. There's no one key player. I did steal that nickname KP though, because I kinda, I don't know, my ego wants to enjoy a little bit of credit for you know, having been the one to put it this way. But basically, we're all equally the key player in our own world. We're all the one, we're all the source. So that's it, all right. Much love, homies. Always.